Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be restoring this iPhone 8. I purchased this iPhone for $300 and it was the cheapest iPhone 8 on eBay Australia. The device was sold as having a badly cracked back and front along with issues with the phone randomly shutting down. I will be restoring this iPhone back to brand new condition as well as changing the color while I'm at it to product red as I prefer this color over the original space gray. This device was advertised as only a 64GB iPhone 8. There was no photos of the device powered on on the listing, so I had no idea on what iOS version this phone was running. Really strange was the phone wasn't actually wrapped in the bubble wrap, rather the bubble wrap was just wrapping a envelope which contained the phone. Either way though, now that I could get the phone out, I could take a look at it. I did power it up and it did display the Apple logo and continued to boot to the hello screen. I then attempted to set up the device and obviously I was expecting this to be iCloud unlocked. Upon setting it up, it got to the activation screen where it shut down. So connecting the charger, it powered back up and I was able to go through the setup and set up the device as brand new. There's no iCloud or anything attached to this, which is great. And going into settings, general and about, I could confirm that this is a 256 gigabyte model, not a 64 gig model as advertised. So I've got four times the storage uh, and the battery health is at 94% rating with uh, some experiencing of the unexpected shutdowns. To fix this, I'm gonna be needing a new replacement housing, a new replacement display and a new battery to fix those shutdown issues. I'm going to be starting by disassembling the old device so I can transfer all of those parts into the new housing. Opening up the display for the first time, the phone was filled with rubbish. And at this point, it's obvious that the phone has undergone a screen replacement. And that third party that has done this screen replacement hasn't reinstalled the water and dust proofing seal. And as a result, dust has been able to enter the phone under the display. I did notice the display was slightly lifted when I first looked at the device, hence where the dust had gotten in. I'll need to remove everything from this device as the back is cracked. The iPhone 8 makes this an extremely involved and difficult process. I'll also need to clean many components that will be going into the new housing to remove as much of the dirt as possible. Obviously, because it's an electronic device, I can't just wash it under the tap, meaning I'm not going to be able to get it 100% spotless, but it will be a lot better than it currently is. Taking a look at the Tabdic engine, you can see all of the connections coming off of it. It's got two on the bottom and another one on the top. This thing connects to so many parts of the phone, I don't even know why, but it really just makes things more complicated to remove. One thing that is less complicated to remove is the battery. It contains four adhesive strips that are much shorter than previous generations. So if you break two of them, then you can still get a fair good pry up on that battery and remove it, no worries. It's easy to remove the lower ones once you get that Taptic engine out, but I want to remove the logic board before I attempt to get the other two. Removing the logic board itself isn't actually too difficult. There is a lot of screws, but after you get a lot of the bigger components off, like the dock connector and the Wi-Fi antenna and many of the brackets, it's actually not too difficult. Even under components, it's still very dirty and dusty. I have no idea where this phone has been. It's probably been owned by someone in the construction industry, given the amount of dirt and dust inside it. I'll need to also remove the camera because that'll be later transferred into the new housing. The camera itself is still functioning. It did have some dust under the lens, obviously, because this phone is full of dust, but after a clean, it will be just fine. With the logic board removed, we can take a closer look at it and make sure there's no corrosion or any signs of water damage. With that all checked out, the water indicators are all perfect and there's no damage to the device. I can remove the remaining two battery adhesive strips to remove the battery from the phone. Now, actually, this one up here is kind of a poor design as it's right above one of the flex cables. So it's a little hard to get it out and not accidentally grip onto the flex cable and rip that. The battery seems very dinted up and I'm guessing that's just from dirt pressing against it and scraping along it inside the phone. Anyway, moving on, we can remove the dock connector from the device, which isn't held down by too many screws. 
There's also some hidden ones which sort of just face the bottom of the device which you need to make sure to get out as well. And then the whole thing just peels up as it's only stuck down with adhesive. One thing I don't like about the iPhone 7 and iPhone 8 is this location of the dock connector flex cable. It actually rests underneath the logic board which makes the whole process of changing your dock connector a lot more difficult than previous generations. Anyway, with the dock removed, I can take out the wireless charging module, which is held down with adhesive, so you want to be careful not to damage that. And then there's just a few little small brackets and things up the top of the device, which will need to be removed so they can be later transferred across. Underneath that is actually the LED flash and microphone for the camera. That's attached to the volume and power button flex cables, which will need to be carefully removed and being very careful not to rip those cables as I didn't have any replacement parts for this. With that flex cable removed, I can now move along to the little clips along the side of the housing which help hold in the display. Some of those are actually covered up with a little plastic pieces so I'll need to take those off before I can get access to those screws. Lastly, I'll need to remove the button spacers. On the 7 and 8, you need to pry those from the right hand side and once they lift up, disconnect them from the device. That's actually relatively difficult to do and it took me a good 10 to 15 minutes. Now that we have the device fully disassembled, we can see everything laid out in front of me. This is how I've organized my parts. This is actually sitting on the magnetic project mat from iFixit. So shout out for them to sending me one of those as well as an iFixit ProTech toolkit, which is what I'm using to repair this iPhone. I will leave links to those down in the description in case you want to check those out if you want to do any sorts of repairs yourself. Now also I just want to mention the housing was purchased via eBay for around $60. It isn't of the highest quality. The glass seems really good, the aluminum seems really good, but those threads are annoying. Uh, I seem to have a few issues with a couple of the screw holes. I wasn't able to get those in, but like I said that housing came straight from eBay. So unfortunately um, I just had to live with that. That's the problem with the iPhone 8 housings is they're actually relatively expensive compared to previous generations. The problem is with the 8 is you can't just replace the back glass. Well, technically you can, but the amount of effort it requires and heat or extreme cold and the glass is basically impossible to remove. And given my housing was in rough shape anyway, I just opted for a complete replacement. And I guess the real big difference between say an iPhone 7 and an iPhone 8 is if you drop the 7 you're going to put a couple of marks on the back but with the 8 you risk completely shattering the back so a small drop could result in an entirely shattered phone instead of just a little dent or a little chip in the corner so durability wise these are nowhere near as durable as previous generation aluminum housings. You also want to make sure to transfer over this little black bar thing that actually interacts with the SIM tray. If you don't put that in, you won't be able to eject SIM cards. I'll need to transfer a lot of the smaller components like the dock connector surround uh, into the device. My housing actually came with a new one of those in silver, so that was really cool. I didn't have to use the space gray one from the old iPhone housing. I have to say this process was actually kind of difficult. There's so much you need to take out and the iPhone 8 to me feels really um, badly engineered on the inside. There's just like way too many connections going to the Taptic engine. Like I don't understand why you need so many. Previous generations used one cable or one set of pins, but with the 8 there's like three different connectors coming off of it. Very strange and I have no idea why that is. I don't know whether those help transfer data to something else, but it is really annoying and if you don't know what you're doing, you can easily damage that Taptic engine. And it's really evident that Apple is trying to stop you from repairing your own device. For instance, most of the screws are Phillips, but there's these random ones like the one on the top rightmost side to the Taptic engine. That random screw right there is a triwing bit. There's no need for that to be a triwing bit, yet Apple does that so it makes the replacement of the Taptic engine more difficult because it requires another screwdriver. And this can really deter people from repairing their own device because they might not have the correct bits to actually properly work on the device. This may result in them getting stuck halfway through a repair and giving up or just not even attempting the repair in the first place. 
There's also a hidden screw underneath the camera connection on um, the logic board. It's actually under some foam. So if you're doing one of these yourself, be sure to remove that screw because if you don't, you can actually completely snap it off uh, up the top there of the logic board and that would completely fry the phone. Now that I've installed the logic board and dock connector, I can install the smaller components like the Wi-Fi antenna and the brackets uh, that go over the connection to the volume and power button flex cable. With that done, it's time to move on to the LCD, which is cracked, so I'll need to swap that over. While doing that, I'll also need to swap over the home button, but be very careful because this is a device specific button, meaning if you damage it and you replace it, you'll never have home button or touch ID function as each individual home button is paired to each individual iPhone. A lot of people don't understand that, they accidentally break it and then never have home button functionality again. The only way to fix that is to go to Apple and have them do the screen replacement as they have the correct software that can actually pair data that's stored up on their servers to the phone and make everything work again. I'll also need to transfer across the front facing camera and the earpiece as well as the backing metal plate which seems oddly flimsy compared to previous generations. And Apple trying to deter us from repairing our own phones, we've got tri-wing screws throughout the display assembly. Taking a closer look at the earpiece, you can see the amount of metal shavings that seem to be attached to the earpiece, so I'll need to give that a clean too. When the iPhone 8 was released and in early versions of iOS 11, if you put a third party display onto the iPhone, AKA a display that isn't paired to the device itself, your iPhone would not boot. Apple got sued for this of course, and now they've removed that with a software update so we can actually change our displays. It's amazing to the amount of lengths that Apple goes to try and stop you from repairing your own device. I should also mention this is a refurbished panel, meaning it is an Apple display. It's just had the glass replaced um, as it was previously cracked. With all of the components transferred across from the old display to the new display, I can install that waterproofing gasket which was missing from when the phone was last assembled and I can attach the display and earpiece to the device, reinstall the appropriate brackets and I'm also going to install an iPhone 5 battery adhesive strip, which makes the battery removal process a lot easier. Plus, I didn't have an iPhone 8 one laying around, so I had to opt for this option. Either way though, it's gonna do the same job as the official Apple one. Setting up the device, reinstalling the two pentalobe screws, and installing a tempered glass screen protector on not only the front, but also the back of the iPhone, and we're done. So this is it, a fully restored 256 gig iPhone 8 for a total cost of $390. To put that into perspective, at the time of making this video, Apple is still selling this iPhone for $1,229 Australian dollars. That's a saving of $839 just by buying and repairing this iPhone. Inspecting this iPhone from the outside, the housing is a really good aftermarket option. It's not 100% perfect, but I'm gonna say it's around 98% and it looks absolutely stunning. Comparing this to the iPhone 7, you can see the difference between the aluminum and the glass. Let me know down in the comments, what do you prefer, the red and white or the red and black displays? And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the iPhone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media for behind the scenes and the occasional giveaway. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.